everybody, my name is James Davies and I want to talk to you today about three photographs that I took, same camera, same film, at the same time. So all these photographs were taken with a Canon EOS or EOS 500, which is uh, an SLR camera. I guess it would be coming from the, uh, the final days of making film SLR cameras. It's very automatic. It has some manual override features, but things like it has DX coding on it, it has auto rewind, auto focus, and you can treat it almost like a point and shoot. I was lucky enough to pick that up for £15 at a charity shop in the UK. I did think twice about buying it because I thought I have a lot of cameras and somebody else might want to pick it up. So it was a case of seeing it on the Monday, deciding that I didn't need it. And when I went back a couple of days later, since it was still there, I decided it was fair game. So the film that I'm using in the camera is True Print Film. Expired True Print Film. True Print was a photo processing service from the UK. I remember using it in the 80s and it probably, it probably goes back much further than that. I almost certainly got this True Print Film from a friend, although I have picked it up in the past in a charity shop. And if you look at the what they call the, the channel art, on this channel. I think the True Print film is, is one of the canisters in that. Anyway, I was obviously looking for a freaky look, you know, the, the stuff that the expired film does for you, because this won't have been kept in any kind of archival conditions. It would have been all over the place. And I did check the camera when I first bought it with a roll of fresh um, Poundland Agfa film, and it was a, a great camera, it, it, it working fine. So I guess I wanted to see what an expired film would look like in it. So this first picture is taken in the USA, in Columbus, Ohio, on my trip to the States at Christmas. So the story behind this picture is one of my own perception of the world. And by that I mean I grew up in the 70s, you know, I was born in the 70s. That part of my generation growing up in the UK, it was one of television and the TV it had a lot of American TV programmes on it. And so by the time I was about four or five or six, I was watching Starsky and Hutch and Star Trek and oh, a huge amount of American culture coming into my life. To the point where I started walking around and a thought that I could see places in my hometown. Uh, I'd never left the UK until I was in my 20s. So my whole perception of the world came to me through books and magazines and TV and films. And in particular, at the end of the street where I lived, there were some industrial buildings, some garage buildings that I thought looked particularly American. And what was interesting was on a previous trip to Columbus, I had found these buildings and they looked like the buildings in my hometown that I thought looked like America. So I've taken pictures of them before, but these pictures are a very personal sense for me of that childhood concept of America. I'm a particular fan of taking pictures of buildings. They help you compose interesting pictures. They have verticals and horizontals and colours and shapes and stuff. So I don't mind seeing pictures of buildings and I, and I enjoy taking pictures of them. So the next picture is, is another subject that I like to take pictures of from time to time. And that is a pavement. But in particular, it is features that are in the pavement that are not to do with walking around. So this is kind of a weird concept, I suppose, when you to think about it in an intense way. But it is correct. You just grow up. If you're alive today, you grow up with the notion that the road exists. Cars drive up and down roads. Cars are dangerous. So when you're a pedestrian, you belong on the pavement. But the pavement isn't just a place for people to walk on, uh, it's a surface covering up stuff that goes on under the pavement or under the road. And one of the things that goes on under the road to get to your house or your building is the utilities. And sometimes somebody has to get to the utilities to manipulate them. They have to just get to them wherever that convenient point is. So I like this picture where all of these ironworks, I'm going to call them, but I can, I can see that they've got water meters. Water, they just say water, not water meters. So they could be what we'd call a stopcock in the UK, or they could be taps or, or ways you can plug into the water. They're just sitting here in the pavement and they almost look like, like bullets that have been shot into the pavement. And most of my photography is, is what you'd call PBWA. There's a group on Flickr called PBWA Photography by Wandering Around. I don't go into studios and set up lights and do that kind of thing. I just get out there with the camera. So I was wandering about, saw these, stood there, framed it up, got the right way around so my shadow wasn't cast or anything, and blam, I shot it. And what you have is a big, uh, sandy, pavementy, beige colour field with this delicious looking crack going from one top to bottom in a sort of diagonal way. And who knows what happened there. Some guy laid the concrete and then something happened to cause that big crack. There's a little line at the top that I think is where the slabs of concrete were laid. A little bit of junction-y sort of thing going in the top right-hand corner. 
And then these water features, they're not water features like a fountain, but you know, the, these circle, circular iron works that are stuck in. And what's the story with the two on the left? You know, did one of the utility guys one day uh, damage them, took the top off, did the work in the hole and, and couldn't get them back on? They're sitting there rusting away. So that's why I took the photograph. I could have framed it in all sorts of different ways, put them in the middle of the picture or, or turn the picture around or something. But I just like this. And the final picture is taken almost in exactly the same spot. But instead of pointing the camera down at the pavement, I stood up and pointed it into the distance. And what you get, I mean, the reason why I stopped and took this picture was, in fact, I remember distinctly the weather was, or the clouds, there was a lot of cloud that day, and the clouds were blowing about quite quickly. And I did distinctly wait for the sun to come out because I liked the colour of that fire hydrant. And I figured if I'd got expired film, and I got a lot of light. I was likely to get something interesting going on with the colours. And so the fire hydrant was what I thought would be a good thing to take a picture of. But I didn't really, I can't remember the green lampposts being quite so green on the day. So I think there's a there's something weird going on with this colour cast. I don't know who made True Print film. I don't think True Print would have made it themselves. They'd have got a company to simply brand it for them. So I don't know if this is distinctly a Fuji type film or a Kodak type film. But I really like these colours and I guess I focused on the that structural feature of the shopping mall, that kind of beige column to be the centre point and let everything cascade its way down towards that. Your eye is caught by these two green verticals and that popping orange fire hydrant. And of course with this concept of seeing different parts of the world, of photography and being able to spread what's distinctive about certain cultures around the world, to me the fire hydrant is a really American thing. We don't have them in the UK. It's not how we get water out into the street for firefighting. That's not to say we don't have them at all, because I've been on an American Air Force base and they have them there, but they're not part of standard UK setup, as it were. So when you take a picture with a fire hydrant in it, you know that you're not in the UK. There's a very good chance you're in North America, a very good chance that you're in the United States. But anyway, that's three photographs taken within 10 minutes of each other on expired film, very cheap expired film, with a very good camera that I happen to get really cheaply. So if you like what you saw today, or if you want to leave a comment, or subscribe to the channel, please do. And I will see you the next time I make a video.